Kate Talenko is Vice President of Health Systems Innovation at IntraHealth International. She told me about the dangers of the H7N9 virus and the threat of mutation. The death rate remains about the same. It's 40%, which is extremely high, but luckily that hasn't changed. But a new study has just come out, which has showed that the virus is mutating very rapidly. And the researchers think that this is very concerning because they've seen a change in how the virus affects chickens. In the past, it didn't make them sick at all. It was asymptomatic. But now it makes them much more sick. And in fact, many of them die within 24 hours. And because it makes them sicker, there's more virus being produced there's more mucus in the chickens, and this makes it more likely to be passed to other chickens or to people. Mutation sounds pretty scary. Mm -hmm. What leads to that? Why is it happening? Mm -hmm. Well, viruses replicate very quickly. When you look at a human generation, it's around 20 years, but a virus generation is a matter of, of hours or days. So, so they, you know, every time that you replicate something, there can be little errors. And some of these errors actually change the proteins in the, the virus. It can change how it works. And the, the scientists do think it's just a matter of time before there's a mutation that makes the disease much more transmissible from human to human. Because right now it's hard for one person to catch it from, from another. But the scientists think that um, H7N9 might, in the end, have the potential to be more dangerous than SARS and more dangerous than swine flu as far as causing a global pandemic. And you said it right there, pandemic, which is what nobody wants to happen. Mm -hmm. How do we get... How, how do we prevent that from happening? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of education and a lot of action on the, on the side of communities and governments. And the Chinese government has really cut, uh, stepped up this year. They've closed more of the uh, poultry markets when they find sick, uh, sick animals in the markets. They've also culled more uh, flocks. This means if you find a few sick birds, you kill all the birds in the flock. And that can be economically damaging, but it's economically damaging on a small scale. Because if it spreads wider, it can be much more economically uh, damaging. And the poultry industry globally uh, it was worth hundreds of billions of dollars. It's a huge industry. And where do things stand when it comes to uh, finding or, or treating this virus and, and when it comes to a vaccine? Mm -hmm. So as far as diagnosing it, it requires a very complicated laboratory test. So there's no quick diagnostic for it now. But if someone has been in contact with poultry in China and gets sick, they should see their physician as soon as possible because there are antiviral medications. They have to be taken as quickly as possible, but they can be effective. As far as the vaccine, the Chinese government, the WHO and the US CDC are working on vaccines, but there's none available yet yet either for humans or for poultry. All right, Kate Talenko, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your thank answer. You.